So far, our Starship mission to the Mun has gone exceedingly well. All we have left is to aero brake and land. Oh, oh no, our parts are overheating, and oh, there goes our crew section. We are in trouble. Well, back to the drawing board on this one. This is Echo 3, and let's continue our modded career mode discussion. Right now, I would like to start going interplanetary, but I don't have any contracts that I would like to take for interplanetary missions. So let's upgrade our tracking station so we can better deal with our probes at long range. Then we are about 30 days away from a transfer window to Duna. So let's make a small probe that can go to Duna and gather science there. We have these different scan sat parts that we can use and start scanning the, the planet. So let's go ahead and put together a satellite for this purpose. We need obviously battery, reaction wheels, some solar panels. We're gonna load this thing full of experiments because I'd like to get as much science out of this mission as possible. I'm not getting any contract missions so far for this. So I wanna get as much use out of it as possible. That is one of the cryo tanks. I had to modify all of those so they could take liquid fuel and oxygen. They weren't set up for that, so I had to modify the configs for those parts. Now we're going to throw on pretty much all the ScanSat parts that I think will be useful for this mission. Um, you know what, let's add a little bit more fuel. I'm going to add this other tank here. Now I'm going to directly attach it and I'm going to play with these nodes here. I'm going to put this engine here on the node, offset it down, put the tank back up. So aesthetically, it will look pretty good. Let's throw on some relay dishes. We might as well get as much use out of this mission as possible. If I'd like to send a rover in the future, these relay dishes should help us maintain contact with the Space Center if our rover is in a less than ideal location. Now, move around some of these parts to keep our torque down. I want to keep the center of mass in line with the engines. So that's what I'm messing with there. Let's toggle some action groups just to make it easier to deploy our solar panels. And we'll put this in a, let me put this in a fairing to launch this thing. Looking at our delta V numbers, this thing has enough to go from low carbon orbit and get into orbit around Duna. So we just need a, a main section here a booster section that's going to get us most of the way into orbit and then that top section has plenty of delta V and thrust to do the rest of the mission. So we'll put some launch clamps on here just to keep it steady. I'm not too sure about having this thing sit on the engine bell on the launch pad so we'll use the clamps. Delta V numbers look pretty good. Thrust to weight ratio looks good. Let's give this a catchy name. Um, this should be our Duna and I don't know what should we call this thing. Well, that looks kind of clever. We can call it a dance mission. So we just launched this thing into orbit now. That's going very well. It seems to be a very stable, easy to use design. I love these near future engines, especially the ones that are designed to mimic the SpaceX Merlin and Raptor engines. They seem to perform very well, maybe a little too overpowered for the Kerbin system. Oh well, I have these mods installed right now, so I'm going to take advantage of them. And we'll park this thing in orbit, and we need to wait about 30 days for our transfer window. So we can set up an alarm here with Kerbal Alarm Clock, and that will let us know when our transfer window comes up. That's set. We can just recover these launch clamps. Let's pick up a mission that's actually going to generate some funds and hopefully lead to some future science. I got a request. Actually, I have a couple requests. One was to start work on setting up a base on the MUN. And with the ScanSat and these base and station contracts, I can pick this one. And if I send a rover down, it will act as the start of our base site. So I need to do some, I guess, research there on the surface. Now let's build a rover here in order to do this part of the mission. Just start with a couple of structural panels. Now I have to get this to the month. Now my intent is to take this rover along with my crude lander when I plant a flag. So this thing needs to be tiny enough that I can take it along with us with our lander and in our launch vehicle. So this is kind of a 
compact design here, seeing what all I can put on here. This antenna, I think will work well. It's, it's a little bit more robust. It's obviously designed for atmospheric use, but I think it fits pretty well there under and a few batteries. Now these reaction wheels will just, these are the tiny ones that will really help us in case the rover is flipped over. So this is a small compact rover. I think it's a mouse <laughs> that'll work for us. Now we have that and we'll save it as a sub assembly. So by saving it as a sub assembly, we can then work on another craft and then attach this as needed. Now I'm gonna build the landing craft and I got a request for a Apollo style landing on the Mun. So I'm gonna make my own custom lander to do this. So this cargo bay is actually gonna be the lander and I'm gonna throw on these docking ports to act as attachment points so we can attach the lander and attach this to the command module. This is going to need a little bit of power, so I'm going to put a battery in here, and we'll put a couple command seats in here as well, and we'll have them face away from each other, so our purples can get in and out through these little doors. That I think that'll work pretty well. Nothing will be clipped as far as that's concerned. Now, let's see, what else do we need to make this thing functional? Obviously, we're going to need some fuel to land, so we'll put some fuel tanks on either side. That... That should be probably enough fuel. Let's just try to make sure everything stays even here. Uh, it's a good idea to try and make your craft symmetrical so that you don't get odd torque. You want the engine thrust to be in line with the center of mass. And if it's not, if it's not that way, you end up with some weird torque and the craft gets hard to fly. All right, we'll throw on a few solar panels so this thing can stay charge the batteries will stay charged and we can use reaction wheels on this that'll make lining up docking and, and just makes turning the craft a little easier so these are the small reaction wheels I don't remember what mod probably one of the near future mods I'm not positive on that that adds these small reaction wheels they're not overly powerful but really nice for very small craft such as this and the rover I'm looking at my thrust to weight ratio and it's not very high so I'm adding one more set of ant engines, so now we have six on this, and they're keeping them off to the side. I could put an engine in the middle, but that's where I want to put the rover that I'm gonna land. So I need some engines that are offset to the side. This is just our, our tiny MUN investigator, a little TMI here. Now that we have that set up, we can try putting on our sub-assembly and seeing how we want this rover to land with the rocket. Looking at our thrust to weight ratio and that looked like we were set up for that. Okay, now we saved the other part as a sub-assembly as well, so let's put together our command module. We'll need a docking port to haul things with and we'll need a couple parachutes and really a spark engine is going to provide all the engine we need. Now this is not going to ride this way, but I want to see where we are with our Delta V budget and we have we have enough delta v with this so i'm not going to launch with the rover and lander on top but i wanted to see where i was with my mass we put the top part in a fairing because it is horribly unaerodynamic now i'm using this is one of those plates there those engine plates and i'm actually going to make a very long engine plate and stick the rover and the lander here in this um, kind of our decoupler section and it will ride that way on the way up a little rcs fuel it'll make docking a little easier put a probe core on the top of this because i'm going to have both of the crew members from the pod go down to the surface and then we'll just have a probe in control of the command module no need for a michael collins to be in control of the thing we'll use a probe just set up a basic launch vehicle to get us into orbit give this thing a catchy name it's our mun scout and let's launch i did make two changes that you didn't see i added one more small fuel tank to the bottom i just wanted a little bit more delta v out of the booster section 
and that will get us almost into orbit. And that's what uh, the main goal of the booster second is, get us enough speed and altitude that that small spark will be able to finish the rest of the journey. Don't need the fairing anymore, we'll detach it. I also saw me build, I forgot to put the RCS um, controls on there, so I, I had to put those back on so I can actually turn around and dock with our rover and lander. And we'll just pull that out of the booster section and now we are set. Now in real life, you would want to have something more designed like this, like the Apollo missions did, because if there's an issue and you have to abort the mission, well, now you just have to abort the, the module and not have to worry about anything on top of it. In Kerbal Space Program, we usually don't worry about aborting the mission or anything like that, but the Apollo program is definitely one to have that as a safety measure. So they had to flip around and dock with their lander, and for the later missions, the rover was with the lander as well. Now we just need to transfer our crew over to the lander. Now we're at the Mun. I've been to the Mun plenty of times, so there's no need to highlight how I got there and everything like that. I just decided to cut that out. It's fine. Where would we want our base to be set up? I'm thinking I would want it on the side facing Kerbin. That would mean we would have radio contact the whole time. The MUN doesn't, uh, well, it rotates at the same speed that it revolves around Kerbin. So the same side faces Kerbin all the time, same way as our moon does. So I want our base to be on the same side that faces Kerbin, so we have radio contact the whole time. Now this doesn't have a great thrust to weight ratio, so I really have to start these engines early. And I think I'd like to land in this crater, so I had to be burning almost the entire way down. And then we'll just drop that. And controls are a little, little sticky, there we go. All right, now we have to plant a flag to complete our second contract. And okay, that rover is kind of odd. Let's see if we can bump it. Eh, well, maybe not. Maybe if we just use the reaction wheels on there, and that should flip it over. Perfect. Now we have planted the flag. We have a rover on the surface for scouting a base location. We've really completed all of our objectives. There isn't much science left to gain here. We have been to the Midlands before. All that's left is to return. We did get, I don't know, around 150, 160 science points, so not not totally uh, a waste of, of funds there. Now we have to rendezvous and dock back with the command module. And I didn't launch at a great time, but we'll be able to get this to line up anyway. The command module is a, controlled by a probe core, so I want to make sure I'm on the side facing Kerbin while I do this. And I'd also prefer to do this while I have some light to work with, so our solar panels will be able to charge a reaction, uh, charge the battery so we can use reaction wheels easily. And we are approaching, looks like we have a good approach here. My technique is I try to burn on the target side of the retrograde marker, so it helps get a closer encounter while reducing our relative velocity. Now we just have to transfer the crew back over to the command module, and I think we might consider using this lander again if we just need a ferry crew. So add a little bit more fuel next time and we can use that lander again if we need to. Unlike real life, our orbit around the Mun won't degrade. The, the, the Moon in real life has some gravitational variances and orbits will degrade over time. And well, they, they won't. Uh, work, but here we don't have to worry about all those gravitational interactions and we can just leave things in orbit for indefinitely. All that's left is to land and recover our pod. I did not really try to land anywhere in particular. It looks like we're going to be over here, I think in the highlands. We've got most of the science from the highlands already. Uh, maybe a surface sample, we can take that, but that might be the only thing we can really get from this location, but we might as well get it anyway, recover. There we go. We have launched a mission that is going to go to Duna. We've got science from the Mun, and we can recover a few parts from that. 
I would like to do one more contract from uh, for the Navy and do a patrol for them. That should be, I don't know, I like airplanes, so I want to do an airplane mission. When I had tried to do the MUN mission before, I had really worked on making something like Starship. And I had spent probably eight to 10 hours working on getting a craft that'll work and how to figure out how to fly it. And it, I was just really struggling. I, the problem was the heat tolerance of the parts. I need some kind of heat shielding tiles to protect my, my Starship design. Other than that, it really worked. It worked fine if I went into just low carbon orbit and landed again, but trying to return from the mine, it was just too much. I'm testing this aircraft here. Um, by tilting it, I can kind of see how the aerodynamic forces change at different angles. And just trying to make sure the craft will remain stable if I pull some heavier banks. This is going to be a fairly maneuverable craft. So all we have to do is, let's see, we need to fly to 20,000 meters. We need to exceed Mach 2, which this craft can easily do both of those. So we're just going to fly up and do that first. Then we fly way south, conduct this patrol for the Navy, and then we'll return. The Starship, and I, I think I have some pretty good ideas on how to make it work. I just need to make sure I'm using more heat tolerant parts. The, the Starship I had, it, it almost worked. It really did. I mean, I could land the booster, didn't have any issues with that. Here we're going to just some of the different uh, sites. All we have to do is return our Navy pilot back to the runway here. And that's, here we go. We can drop him off. The contract said that he just has to be recovered here at the runway. But the other contract stipulates that we recover at our base. So, whoop, take it easy, land there. So I hope to continue work on Starship and get my prototypes working on that and highlight for that for you guys, but it's been, it's been a struggle. This is Echo 3. Thanks for joining me on this modded career mode discussion. I do look forward to seeing you next time. If you have any ideas, please feel free to share them in, your com in the comments. Remember to like and subscribe.